Hey guys, AP here, and today we are going to be making another tutorial in our Lightweight Java Game Library 3 tutorial series. Uh, so now we're going to be working on how to actually make the shaders useful. Uh, for right now we just have it ba uh, make a color based on their position, but in an actual game we wouldn't really want that. See, this is cool looking, but we don't really want that if we want to actually use these shaders. Uh, so let's actually make them useful. So to there's a couple ways to make them useful. Uh, one of them is to actually texture uh, each mesh, uh, which we'll do in probably the next tutorial. Uh, but another way of doing it is just plain hard code coloring it, which is just going into a vertex and make it a specific color. Uh, so it's really easy to actually do that since uh, we already have a way to get uh, what is it? A way to get uh, uh, data into our shaders through uh, this like layout stuff uh, so we can actually do that going into our mesh object and actually adding in another vertex attrib pointer uh, but since I don't want to mess up like or not mess up but like make this create function very long I'm gonna actually add another function in here called store data which basically makes this a reusable thing so uh, private in because we want it to return uh, what the data or the buffered ID is so store data it needs the data to be stored which if you look in here it's actually the buffer so uh, float buffer uh, and then we're just going to call it buffer and then we need the index of where we want to store it so int index and then how big it is so we're going to say int size now I know I could just like make it to where it returns or have a two functions that uh, gets this done and this done but I don't know how to make a function to this because it has this versus that get position uh, so I'm just not gonna mess with it it's not really that it's actually bigger than it but it uh, it actually is case sensitive to what how big each uh, vertices is uh, but this should always work so now that we have that we can actually just kind of just Put that in there now so instead of calling this uh, pbo because that's really case sensitive we're just going to call it a buffer id so buffer id uh, buffer id with capital d buffer id let's put this where all the buffer is and then put buffer here put index here and put size here so basically now we can actually reuse this line of code to, to our advantage and then afterwards we need to actually return the buffer ID so we can store it and eventually delete the buffer uh, which I'm going to do in this tutorial so now with that we want to just say PBO is equal to store data of the buffer which is our position buffer buffer the index of it which is 0 and the size of it which is 3 like before except it's in this type of format and so now, uh, nothing should have changed. Uh, we should just get a normal rectangle that, or a color rectangle. So there we go. Uh, and so yeah. So now we're actually going to use this um, little uh, little piece of code here to actually add color to our mesh. So basically, copy and paste this and just change position to color. So color buffer, or try to copy the color change position to color change get oh uh, yeah let's just do this here for right now so you if you say get color you get an error because we haven't added the color into our vertices yet so that means that's good and just say color buffer is here and say color buffer and then color data and let's actually make a new buffer object so uh, CBO which is color buffer object uh, and just say CBO and now we want to store this in the next index which is index 1 and it has an RGB so it's three uh, elements big and then for this we really don't since this is using uh, an element array we're not going to make a function for that because you should only use that once and so now let's actually change our vertex uh, class to actually support color and so let's just say since it's another vector 3f we just say position and then color Let's add that into our constructor. So vector three of color. This dot color. If it will load, there we go. 
this.color is equal to color uh, and then uh, get position we also want to have a get color so public vector 3f get color so return the color there we go so now if we go into our mesh we should see that CBO is not being used it's because we haven't got to get CBO uh, but we're also going to put another use to it which is getting rid of it after we delete our model so get CBO return CBO so now with that out of the way uh, we also want to have another function uh, I'm just going to put it under the private store data public void destroy so basically this gets rid of all the buffers so GL15 and it's going to be called GL delete buffers and so we're going to get rid of the position one the color one and the indices one so GL delete buffer uh, and this is going to be CBO GL15 GL delete buffers uh, IBO and then after we delete all the buffers we should delete the actual vertex array that stored all the buffers. So GL delete or GL30, GL30 dot GL, GL30. Eventually, I'll get it. GL30 dot GL delete vertex arrays and then whatever array it is. So VAO. And there we go. So we should actually make a new function called uh, close. So like after all this, we should say like private void close and this is where all like our destroy methods is so like private void close we just call it close here and this is where all our stuff is going to be so mesh dot close or not mesh dot close mesh dot destroy and maybe like render or destroy or shader destroy actually do we have a shader destroy yeah we have it there it is so we should also add shader destroy so shader dot destroy and so that's just a little cleanup right there. But now we have a few errors here uh, saying that it should have a color uh, there. So we could just fix that by saying new vector 3f to all of them and then like define a color. So let's give this vertex a little red color. Uh, if I can, there. And that's it. Let's just copy and paste that and give them all like different colors like. One of them should be yellow, green, and blue, maybe. I don't know. Just trying to make separate color. Maybe have like a little cascading line down there. So, and then yellow. All right. So now if we run this, we should see that nothing has changed. Uh, so what has happened is that we haven't actually done anything with the shaders yet. We have the same shader and shaders basically controls everything and so now that we have actually stored our um, color in a vertex uh, attribute pointer we can actually ac access it in the shaders so to add color just say layout and then location and then we're going to say one because that's the same index we put in our uh, color store or our stored data method as you can see so if we go to main vertex it would just say in vec3 color and there's not really much changing we have to do here uh, now we have to say uh, pass color since we use the color name here so I'm just gonna call this a pass color uh, because we're not really calling it a color so now we have to take in a color and it's gonna be here so now uh, instead of saying pass color is equal to this we can just say pass color is equal to the color uh, now if I show you this there's gonna be an error as you can see so it is all black there's a problem it doesn't I don't think it has uh, there's a problem basically uh, and the reason is we haven't actually enabled this uh, location to be used in the shader so if we go into our render I'll show you a little line of code that does that as you can see we enabled the position using GL30 G enable vertex attribute rate zero so that basically allows the position or this little line of code to work so now we have to do the same for this except you know it's location one is it's, it's location one instead of zero there we go that's what I was trying to say 
So we go in here and we say enable vertex up trim away array. Uh, that means we can actually use the color now, but then we have to disable it to prevent other things from happening. Uh, so there we go. And so that means if we run this, we should have a bit more prettier of a rectangle, which we do. All right, I'm back. It's just a little uh, copy and paste error. I forgot to call this um, uh, uh, color data instead of positions and data. So if we just call that color data, now it should work. Just a little copy and paste error. Uh, so here we go. There is our beautiful rectangle. We have red in this corner, green in this one, blue in this one, and yellow in this one, and then just a mixture of all the colors in the middle, which is a pretty better looking uh, rectangle. So uh, now, instead of it being colored in the vertex or in the shaders, we can actually color it in our mesh object. So say that we want it all uh, blue, we basically just say this is all blue, uh, which this is not how we're going to be texturing uh, our uh, shapes. I mean, if you just want like a simple white shape, this is a better way of doing it than making a white texture. Uh, so yeah, as you can see, now it's all blue. Uh, but since we're actually going to be using better things like textures, we're going to be using that instead. So in the next tutorial, we're actually going to be implementing those textures. Uh, so the first thing it's basically uh, a bunch of more file loading so we're going to use file utils for our image loading and then using OpenGL to actually bind the texture to the current mesh. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial series. Uh, if you want to see more please make sure to leave a like uh, and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. Bye!